What is going on guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be working on the super cheap Turbo Civic build that we've put together and we're going to be working with the quick spool feature in the Honda S300. We're going to be testing it to see how fast we can get this turbo to spool up without changing any other factors except for the quick spool and activation settings for our boost control. We are using a Max Beating Rods TO4E billet wheel turbo that we hand ported ourselves and we're running that on a JDM D15B non-VTEC while we build our D16Y8 for this car. If you guys want to see more on the combination that we're running or how we ported the turbo or anything like that or the new engine build, make sure to check it out in the Honda playlist. But let's get through the intro and jump right into today's video. Now that we've gotten through the intro, I want to explain to you guys how we're going to be performing these tests. We're going to pick a set gear and a set RPM to start all of these tests at. Then I will go wide open throttle and we will see how long it takes to get into full boost. And we'll use my laptop to data log through the Honda data software so that we can see how long it takes as well as what RPM it achieved full boost at. Then I'd like to use the draggy so that we have a second source of information. I'll take the car out in a set gear. We'll see what RPM correlates to what speed at the bottom of that gear. Then we'll do the same thing for the top of that gear so that we have a starting and end point to enter into the draggy so that it can tell us how long it took to get from point A to point B so that we have a second source to look at and see how much we actually gained. So now let's get the laptop out, get this thing fired up and go get a baseline run done. Now that we're in the car, we're gonna get everything set up. So you can see I've got my draggy up here. We went ahead and made a custom one. So we're gonna use the custom mode and I've got it set to start at 20 miles an hour and end at 55 miles an hour. If we need to, we can adjust that a little bit later. I'm gonna to try to record using that as well. It might be a little bit shaky, but we'll see what happens. And then as far as the tune is concerned, we're not gonna mess with anything at all except for activation and the quick spool. So as you guys can see, our fixed duty cycle is set at 60%. That's gonna stay the same for the duration of this test. Should be right around 12, 13 PSI for us. And then as you can see down here, we've got the quick spool option and we've also got our activation PSI. So the way I'm gonna do it for now for the first baseline test is I've got activation pressure set at negative two PSI, whatever that works out to be. And then for the quick spool itself, we're gonna be running first gear through fifth gear Right now we've got second through fifth at zero and then in first gear I have 0.2 because if I zero it all out you can hear the boost control solenoid clicking like crazy. So there's no reason for it to do that. So I just put it at 0.2. So we'll perform the test at second gear. We're gonna start around 20 miles an hour as bogged down as I can get the car. Then we will run it up to 55 or to the shift, whichever comes first. And then we'll take a look at all of our data and see if we need to adjust anything. So that's where we're going to start off with. Uh, quick spool is effectively off right now. So that's how we're going to run it. Let's get this thing fired up. It is freezing outside, guys. So I did start the car a little while ago, let it warm up for a bit. But we're going to fire it up again right now, let it warm up a second, and we will go take it for a ride and do a test. So that was the first run and I can say right off the bat this thing felt 
extremely boggy it felt like a dog to be honest so i think it's definitely going to be a noticeable comparison i did step on it a little bit in third there but mainly wanted to test out second gear tires did not try to spin at all so that's a telltale sign right there um, it was very very laggy Intel super high RPM. We'll go ahead loop around. We'll save all of the data log and the draggy information so that we can take a look at it and then we will up the activation PSI and we will also up the quick spool PSI and see how much of a difference that makes. Now that we've got the log opened up with quick spool off you guys can see at this point right here the car is making zero boost and zero vacuum so as we start to move to the right you will see the boost numbers start to climb and it took almost seven seconds for this thing to get up to 11 pounds of boost and it was all the way out at almost 6,000 RPM or actually a little bit over 6,000 RPM which explains why this car felt so low on power or like the turbo was extremely laggy. So let's see if we can fix that with a little bit of quick spool. Now that we've got the boost control tab opened up, let's go down here under quick spool. We're gonna change all of this around. We're gonna bump up first gear up to two pounds of boost and then gears two through five, we're gonna bump up to five pounds of boost. This should get quick spool active and keep it active for a little while so that we can see what's gonna happen with a lower PSI setting. We did also bump up our activation PSI to one PSI. So real quick before we take the car for a ride, I wanted to talk a little bit about quick spool just in case you guys have never used it or don't know exactly what it is. So quick spool is a feature inside your Honda S300 ECU, which supplies boost pressure to the top of the wastegate, forcing the piston to stay closed and not allowing any exhaust pressure to bleed off while you're trying to spool the turbo. Now, one of the ways you can use this is let's say you already have your boost control already set up and you have the activation set at one PSI and let's say your car makes 12 pounds of boost at 60% duty cycle. You could go into the quick spool column and enter 10 PSI across the board and what that would do is once your boost control becomes active at that one PSI, it would then supply boost pressure to the top of the wastegate, forcing that piston shut all the way up until you hit the set 10 PSI, which then it would revert back to the 60% duty cycle and go back to functioning like normal. So now that we've covered what quick spool is and how it works, let's go take the car for a ride and see how good it is at doing its job. I do want to take a look at the data log because it feels way quicker with the quick spool turned up. I'm very curious to see how much peak boost it made and I'm also curious to see what happens as we up the uh, quick spool even more. So let's go take a look at the data and we'll go from there with it. So now we've got the log opened up from running the car with quick spool set at five pounds of boost. And as you can see, right where the cursor is, we were at zero boost, zero vacuum. And as we start to move to the right, you can see that boost quickly climbs and we were able to achieve 11 pounds of boost at 5,100 RPM. So not only were we able to take off almost a thousand RPM before we hit our max boost, but we were also able to get there just about three seconds faster. That is a huge improvement and definitely makes the car feel a lot more lively. Let's see what happens if we bump quick spool up a little bit more. We are going to go under the boost control tab, back under quick spool, and we're gonna change the settings for gears two through five from five PSI up to seven PSI. We don't wanna have any boost spikes, so I'm curious to see how far we can go before we have any issues. Let's see how it acts set at seven PSI. I interrupt today's video to tell you guys about a video that we did a little while back with Oxido LED. They are a great quality bulb and they have a plug and play bulb for many applications. I have been extremely happy with mine. And as you guys can see, compared to your standard halogen bulb, they are extremely bright. And we have worked with them to get you guys a code that you can enter at checkout to save 10%, bought to build, all capitals, no spaces. And I will also put a link to their website in the description of today's video. Let's get back to today's video.
Definitely made a good run. Definitely felt a ton faster than it was. So we'll go ahead and stop the draggy. That was on seven. I didn't get a chance to look over and see if it boost crept at all, but we'll take a look at the log as soon as we get back and see what that was. I was looking at the AFR, which is still spot on. Now we've got the log opened up from running the car with quick spool set at seven pounds of boost. And as you can see, I started the run at a lower speed and a lower RPM because I was curious to see if it would still outperform the quick spool off test. And it definitely did. It got there much quicker than it did with quick spool off, even with quick spool off starting at a higher speed and higher RPM. So I was pretty impressed to see that. Now you've got to remember we're only shooting for 12 pounds of boost here. I think if we were running more like 30 pounds, which we will be on the new engine we're putting together for this thing, I think we'd see a much bigger difference because we could utilize quick spool all the way up to 20 plus pounds of boost. And I think that would give us a huge difference versus no quick spool at all. In our case here, I feel like once we have quick spool set at five pounds, the turbo comes to life and spools up and it can carry itself from there on. But I am very curious to see if we're gonna have any boost spike issues if we bump up quick spool a few more PSI. So let's try it out and see what happens. We are back under the boost control tab. We're gonna go back down to quick spool and we're gonna take gears two through five and bump them up from seven PSI all the way up to nine PSI. I'm very curious to see if we're gonna hit a point where we're gonna start having boost creep issues going past where our boost control is set and it would spike up and then have to come back down. So let's run it at nine PSI and see how it does. super quick and was making some good power early i did forget to start the draggy for that run so we don't have a time on it but like i said pretty inconsistent i had a car behind me so i had to start closer to the 30 mile an hour mark but we did get the data log so we're good there we can still see how much time it took for it to get to full boost and how much boost it made so let's take a look at these logs and we will go from there see if we can give it a little bit more still We've got another data log opened up here, this one from running the car with quick spool set at 9 PSI. And as you can see, as we move to the right, boost climbed super quick. It took us just at three seconds to hit 11 pounds of boost. So not a crazy improvement over having the quick spool set at five pounds of boost. It seems like once we get this turbo lit, it spools the rest of the way up all on its own and doesn't have an issue hitting that 11, 12 PSI mark. Once again, I feel like if we were shooting for something closer to 30 pounds, then we would see a bigger difference bumping these numbers up. But we still don't see any negative effects like boost spike or the boost shooting pass where we have the boost controller set at and then happening to come back down. So that's a good sign. Let's go ahead, bump it up one more time and see what happens. We are back under the boost control tab once again. We're gonna go down to quick spool and we're gonna bump these numbers up for gears two through five from nine PSI up to 10 and a half PSI. I wanna see if we're gonna have any boost spike issues or if the boost is gonna creep past our target and we're gonna to have to work it back down. So let's try it out at 10 and a half PSI and see what happens. Definitely pulls way harder and way stronger all the way up to the target boost settings. So by having the quick spool set up, it might not be making more peak power, but the way the power is delivered is way more usable and it makes the car a ton funner to drive. Like night and day difference from before to now. Before I just thought this turbo was super laggy on this setup, but now that we've got quick spool set up properly, we're lugged down in fourth. As soon as I tiptoe into it, it starts making boost. So it's a perfect fit for this combination. If you guys think your turbo's a little on the laggy side, try playing with the quick spool feature. You might be pleasantly surprised like I was 
and uh, your car might drive completely different. So let's take a look at the data that we have from that last run and see what the data says. We've got the last data log opened up here from running the car with quick spool set at 10 and a half pounds of boost. And as you can see, starting off over here on the left at zero pounds of boost and zero vacuum, running up to the right where you can see boost climbed extremely fast. And at just 4,500 RPM, we were at just about 11 pounds of boost in just a few seconds. So by far, this was the best test we've seen so far. And we still don't see any boost spike or boost creep issues that would have had to go up and work their way back down. So I am extremely happy with what we're seeing here. The quick spool is definitely doing its job and working phenomenally. I couldn't be happier with it and I can't wait to get the new engine together and in the car so that we can try quick spool out with something closer to 30 pounds of boost. So now that we've had some time to look at all of the data from each of our runs, I have found that the draggy information is kind of invalid. It's not gonna work for what we are trying to find out for a couple reasons. A, the video quality was just horrible. Not that that matters as far as our data is concerned, but what does matter is we weren't able to start at a set mile an hour and set RPM each time. Sometimes we had to start closer to 30 and sometimes we were able to start under 20. And that plays a huge role in what time it's gonna make in a mile per hour to mile per hour run on a draggy. If you were trying to do a 60 to 130 mile an hour, which is super common on the draggies, you always wanna start as close to zero as possible because your car has a lot more momentum going into that start number. Whereas if you started closer to 55 or you're right at 60 miles an hour, your time's gonna be a lot slower because the car has to get its momentum going as it's carrying through that time slot. So we weren't really able to use the draggy information, but what we were able to use was the data logs. The data logs showed just about everything that we needed to see, which proved to us that quick spool is a huge asset to have if your ECU is capable of running it. We weren't running it for the longest time because I just didn't have it set up. And now that I do have it set up, I will always use it if the ECU is capable of doing so. It is noticeable how much quicker this turbo comes online, how fast it spools up. And I'd be very curious to throw it on the dyno and see if we affected our torque curve because it definitely feels like it gets up a lot faster. So in some cases, we were able to shave off over three seconds from when we floored it to 10 PSI. I use 10 PSI because on the first run, that's as high as the boost would get because we weren't able to achieve our boost setting that we have the boost controller set up for because the turbo just couldn't quite get there. So after we started using the quick spool, the boost was able to get up to our boost control settings, but that wouldn't make it fair for the first test. It would just be a DNF. So we're gonna run with 10 PSI for all of those tests and it definitely proved itself to work phenomenally. This thing shaved off a ton of time and was way quicker and just way more fun to drive around on, a lot more responsive. So if you guys are able to set up quick spool in your ECU, it's super easy to do and it's actually pretty fun to mess around with. And you can do it just like you would boost by gear. You can set it up different for each gear as you guys seen. So great feature to have. But as always, I appreciate you guys for checking out the channel. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell, and check us out on all of our other social media platforms, Facebook, TikTok, and Bought to Build Official on Instagram. And we will catch you on the next one.